please take your seats. The show is about to begin. Before it does, two public announcements. Firstly, out of consideration for your fellow patrons, please turn off your cell phones. And secondly, if you're one of those I love Pink Floyd but I can't stand Roger's politics people, you might do well to fuck off to the bar right now. Thank you.
lose Competition good for you The guy to be free They're the powers of be The powers of be The powers of be The powers of be They're like a bomb-proof Cadillac Air condition gold tap back Cheap dark rack Brad of cabs They've been courses for courses They're the market courses said our programs would result in catastrophe. Our views on foreign affairs would cause war. Once you begin a great movement, there's no telling where it'll end. We meant to change a nation, and instead, we changed a world. Just 
movies, oh sure. You're good for not buddies. You wear the right masks. You're old, but you still like a lamp in the locker room. You're kind of by change. You're at home on the range.
pretty much the same cast. At the big opening meeting, we all got together, and all of a sudden, just for a moment, I saw that everyone was just sitting there looking at me. And then one of them broke the silence. Tell us about the American miracle, he said. Hey, bartender, over here. Two more shirts and two more beers. Sir, turn up the TV sound. The war started on the ground. Buenas noches. do a new song now it's called the bar and it's a song about going to somewhere where you can get a drink and you can meet your friends or you can meet strangers and you can chat you can talk you can have a conversation with other people you can express an opinion without somebody coming and dragging you away to jail or something. All right, let's get this out of the way. <clears throat> I've been here many, many times to this beautiful city of yours, and I've always had a great time. And I've been very warmly welcomed in Buenos Aires. This time's a bit different. This time, sorry, I didn't mean to shout. This, <laughs> I know. It would be funny if it was funny. Well, it is sort of. I don't know if any of you know this, but this time there are people in this city who will not let me stay in a hotel. I mean, what? Oh, look, did they give me the name? Oh, yeah. This, this is one of them. His name's Gabriel Galinsky. I've no idea who he is, or where he's from, or where he lives, but this bloke owns all the Four Seasons hotels in the world. Well, fucking good for you, Gabriel Galinsky. Anyway. Anyway. Never mind all that. I just want to point out that there's a difference between the people who won't let me, won't give me a room at the inn, okay, and me. And the difference between them, this bloke, and all the rest of them, and me, and all the rest of the Israeli lobby, by the way, and me, the difference is that I believe in universal human rights for all my brothers and sisters all over the world irrespective of their ethnicity or religion or nationality
And that obviously would apply to my brothers and sisters in Palestine. who, as we speak, are the subject of a genocide. So that is the difference. I believe in human rights and they don't. Here's my suggestion. For the, I'll shut up in a minute, but this is important, okay? In order for the Holy Land to move into a period of peace and for the killing to stop not just for a day or two, but forever. For that to happen, they are going to have to accept equal human rights for all the people who live in the Holy Land between the Jordan River and the Mediterranean Sea. All equal. No masters, no slaves, all equal. Whether it's... I'll stop now. I've had my say. But, but I've had my say, so thank you. Right, back to the bar. Um, this little bit of the song is about some friends in America. Well, they're not necessarily friends. But they're people who work for an armaments factory called Raytheon. It's in western Arizona. And I'm sure they're well-meaning, probably kind people, but they're making bombs that are killing brown people all over the fucking world. So I hope they listen to this bit of the song one day. Thank you for coming. I love you all with a desperate passion. Thank you, B.A. Motherfuckers bound to drop it on a busload of kids going to school. You can't hold up your hand in denial and justify the choices in your head. When I'm drinking my coffee 
Yemeni shit. I can't help feeling bad for that grieving foreign dad. To the bus that's just been hit. So on Monday, when you walk in to the factory gate, and on Friday, when you're picking up your chair, you'll be sitting on the curbside like the bicycle. But with no boy to put his arms round daddy's neck. Okay, now we're going to drift back through the mists of time to an earlier age when I was playing my rock and roll in a different band.
would have rearranged the veins in the face to make them more resistant to alcohol, less prone to aging. If I had the income, I would have sired many sons and I would not have suffered the Romans to kill even one of them. With my staff and my rod, if I had been given the rod, I believe I could have done a better job.
of ethnic groups, even folks from Guadeloupe, the old, the young, toothless hags, supermodels, actors, fans, bleeding hearts, football stars, men in bars, washerwomen, tailors, tights, grannies, grandpas, uncles, aunts, friends, relations, homeless tramps, clerics, truckers, cleaning ladies, ants, well, maybe not ants, well, because it's true, that ants don't have enough IQ to differentiate between the pain that other people feel, and well, for instance, cutting leaves or crawling across windowsills in search of open treacle tins. So like the ants, are we just dumb? Is that why we don't feel or see? Or are we all just numb down on reality TV? So every time The curtain falls Every time the curtain falls on some forgotten land It is because we all stood by Silent and indifferent It's normal
You have no idea how great it has been for me and everyone in the band to perform for you tonight. You've been a fantastic audience. We thank you for coming. Okay. So. Thank you! Um, we're going to do two more songs for you tonight. What a beautiful moon. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's something I really like. All right. Yeah, we're going to do a song from the last record that I made with Pink Floyd. It was a record called The Final Cut, and it was in 1982. Thank you, madam. And we're going to do um, the last cut from The Final Cut. It's a song called Two Sons in the Sunset that some of you will know. It's an important song because... Uh, it's a bit of a warning about the fact that we are steering very close to the outbreak of the Third World War. Okay, Not just in the Ukraine and in the Middle East, but other places. So we need to um, tell our leaders that they should get down the bar, have a pint of beer or a glass of water, and sit round a table and agree that the world would be a better place with no nuclear weapons anywhere. You don't want them, I don't want them. None of the people anywhere in the world want nuclear weapons, so, well, all right. Anyway, this song is about a bloke who's driving home one night and the Third World War happens, so he never gets home to see his wife and kids. So it's rather gloomy, but I like it, and so we're going to do it now. Uh, when I stamp my foot, somebody will start the doomsday clock. The doomsday clock was an invention of some atomic scientists in 1947 who invented the idea of a clock that is ticking towards midnight, and if it ever reaches midnight, we're all dead. So here it goes.
gives way And certainly it's day again The sun is in the east Even though the day is done Two suns in the sunset I love you too, otherwise I wouldn't be here, would I? <laughs> I do. 
I love you all. I love you all. I love being here in this room with you. I've been doing this for 60 years. And I do it because I love it. I love playing music. And I love playing music to you guys here, particularly. So. Anyway, this is, this is where we go back to the bar. And we find out that not all the colourless liquid is agua. All right, so hang on, let's go. How are we getting on? Come on, let's go down the front here. So, this is not water, all right. We're, now is the time when we'd like you all to come up on the stage and gather around the piano. But unfortunately, there are too many of you. So this is going to have to do. I'm the only one with a microphone. So I'm going to be the one saying cheers. But this is with great love from all the wonderful people in my band. Come on, chaps, put the, that, that there. Cheers! We love you. Oh, that's good. That was worth it. This is Mesco from uh, north of the border, from Mexico. All right, we're going to go and uh, sit down. Or oh, we're not going to sit down. We're going to stand around the piano and we're going to do one more song. Um, I have to mention three names before we do this song. Uh, the first name that I mention is Bob Dylan. Yeah. Bob Dylan. Back in 1966, Bob Dylan made a great album called Blonde on Blonde. Okay, I know it's before most of you were born, but it's a great record. It was a double album, vinyl. The fourth side is a beautiful ballad, the whole side, and it's called Sad-Eyed Lady of the Lowlands. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sad-Eyed Lady of the Lowlands. Well, I, the reason I bring it up is because I stole those words and I put them in this song. There I was in COVID and I was writing the bar. And um, so thank, I, I just want to say thank you to Bob. He doesn't know I've stolen them, obviously. So if any of you run into Bob Dylan anywhere, could you say, Roger says, thanks, Bob. Okay. Sad-eyed lady and big brass bed are the six words. So that's Bob. The sad-eyed lady in the song, I want to mention her as well. She's here tonight somewhere. Her name's Camilla, and she's my wife. And she's my rock. I lean on my beautiful Camilla. She's not sad-eyed all the time, but she does get sad-eyed because she's got a lot of empathy in her heart. So uh, she gets a bit sad about people who have been bombed and stuff like that. So, but that's Camila. So, Camila, thanks you, my beautiful. Thank you. And the other one, the other name. Yeah, come on, let's hear it for my missus. <laughs> because I am lucky. Uh, anyway, where were we? Yeah, the other name is John. John was my big brother, okay? Sadly, he died last year and we miss him but when I wrote this song he was still alive but in the song my big brother is about that big and I'm about that big all right so he's in the song so this is for Bob Dylan okay for Camila and for John my big brother Cheers. <laughs> okay, Mike. Come lay a 
across my big breast bed Maybe it is we that have been chosen You and me To point out this don't make no fucking sense Together in 
after all it's not easy